tight time frame. We'd like to keep this to, uh, to our uh, time frame. Without further ado, I would like to welcome His Excellency, Chief Olusegun Obasanjo, GCFR, Chairperson of IATF Advisory Council, and former President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, to share with us his um, welcoming remarks. Welcome. Excellency, the President of Fire Bank, Your Excellency, the Secretary General of the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, members of the press, I believe it's still not too late to wish ourselves Happy New Year. We are just in the second half of the new year. And my prayer is that the year 2022 may be a better year for all of us than the year 2021. Even though for us at the IATF, the year 2021 singular honor and indeed privilege to address you at this meeting. We have called you today so we can have a brief on the performance of last year and present details of the achievement of the second intra-Africa trade fair, which held in Durban, KwaZulu Natal, South Africa, from 15th to 21st November 2021, and to formally kick off preparations for the third edition of the fair scheduled to hold in Abidjan, Republic of Côte d'Ivoire in 2023. IATF 2021 represented much more than just a trade fair. It was a powerful, transformative socioeconomic event that fostered African integration on the platform of trade. We saw seven sitting heads of state and government participating in the event by gracing the opening ceremony and visiting the exhibition stands. We had different countries from all the regions of the continent whose country pavilions 
and take up the special country days during which the rich and diverse cultures and economic prowess of the continent were celebrated. It provided a meeting platform for trade and investment deals worth more than $42 billion to be closed in just one week with participants from all over the world. I believe we shall have more details to talk about as the morning runs along. And it projected the creativity and ingenious capacities of African youth and women, as well as a display of potentials of the African automotive industry. We are extremely proud to say that IATF 2021 turned out to be a resoundingly successful week that met and surpassed all our expectations. IATF 21, uh, 2021 epitomized by all measures what can be achieved if we come together to support this continental cause, believing in our own capabilities and abilities as Africans to lead from the front in changing our socioeconomic situation. I must, however, note that the event was not short of challenges that had to be surmounted. It was a very long journey characterized by several uncertainties ranging from postponements induced by COVID-19 pandemic to moving the venue from Kigali to Durban at very short notice. The successful hosting of IATF 2021 clearly illustrated the determination and resilience of the African spirit. Despite the specter of COVID-19 and its devastating impact on supply chains, it was gratifying that we held a very successful trade fair. This will not have been possible without the hard work, vision, and extreme determination of the organizers. I therefore want to use this opportunity to thank everybody that contributed in any measure and in any way to making the IATF 2021 a success that it was. Please permit me to pay special tribute to the members of the IATF Advisory Council whose guidance and feedback ensured we stayed the course to achieving the set objectives. I want to particularly thank Mr. Jean Louis Ekra, my able deputy chairperson of the Advisory Council, who is not here with us today, for his impeccable leadership and wisdom. I want to also give special recognition to the board, management, and staff of Afrexin Bank, led by my brother, the indefatigable Professor Benedict Orama, president of the bank, and the brain behind the IATF initiative. Dr. Orama, we all appreciate you. Thank you.
My kind appreciation goes to His Excellency Mr. Wankele Mene, Secretary General of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Secretariat, the torch bearer of IATF, just as I must recognize His, um, uh, His Excellency Ambassador Albert Muchanga, AU Commissioner for Economic Development, Trade, Industry, and Mining, whose extraordinary energy and commitment in no small measure ensured we succeeded in our quest. Let me also express my heartfelt administration and appreciation to Mrs. Kanayo Awani, Managing Director, Intra-Africa Trade Initiative, Afrexim Bank, the anchor and vision carrier of IATF, who brought the event to life. We cannot forget His Excellency President Cyril Ramaphosa, President of the Republic of South Africa, Mr. Sile Sikalala, Premier of KwaZulu Natal Province, and the government and people of South Africa, to whom we are eternally grateful for accepting to host the IATF 2021 under very difficult and uncertain circumstances. We express our sincere thanks to the great hospitality and support we enjoyed in Durban. I would also like to thank our ITF ambassadors who assisted in propagating the dream as well as to our general sponsors who contributed in time and resources in making the dream come true. Lastly, I cannot conclude without paying my special tribute to the exhibitors, delegates, visitors, speakers at the various events and all participants without whom we would not have had the positive and successful outcome. The tireless efforts contributed immensely to making success of the 2021 trade fair, the premier trade event in Africa last year. And for that, I thank you all. As I conclude, and as we draw the curtain on IATF 2021 Durban, South Africa, and pass the baton to Côte d'Ivoire, I wish to inform you that registration for the third Intra-African Trade Fair, IATF 2023, which we hold in Abidjan, Côte d'Ivoire in 2023, is now officially open. Countries, exhibitors, buyers, delegates, visitors, media from within Africa and the rest of the world can now register their participation at the IATF 2023. The success of the inaugural IATF held in Cairo, Egypt in 2018 provided a building block for the successful outing in Durban last year. We must therefore ensure that efforts aimed at growing intra-Africa trade are sustained and hope that IATF 2023 will again provide an opportunity for exhibitors to showcase their goods and services, engage in business-to-business -business exchanges, 
and conclude business deals that will change the fortune of the continent. The IETF is an important component of our efforts at righting the wrongs of the past and breaking down borders aimed at building bridges to help us achieve the ambitions of Agenda 2063, the Africa we want. It is on this note that I thank you for being with us today. Thank you for your attention. Welcome to Connecting Africa. I'm Eleni Jarkas and this month I've traveled to South Africa to the port city of Durban, one of the most significant gateways into the continent. And this year it's hosting the Intra-Africa Trade Fair. Five thousand participants, ten thousand visitors, buyers from fifty-five countries makes this one of the most exciting places to be. And the whole aim is to secure forty billion dollars worth of trade and investment deals. I can see the sun, I'm rising up, I feel the love now. Oh, it's in my vision. People are very much interested in our products, but what is more important for a long term is to get buyers from all over the Africa country. Uh, we're here to meet up with the rest of the continent to just, you know, build up our brand and just make business relations. You've come all the way from Ghana. Yes, yes. West Africa. West Africa. Yes. And your, your big uh, focus is Shea. Yes, promoting Shea to the world and letting the, the yeah. world know about the benefit of Shea to the communities where, where, you know, where they grow the businesses that are in those communities, and most yeah. importantly, the environment. So now you want to increase trade into Africa, in, right? Yes. You want Africans to consume these products. Yes. Okay. So finished products of creams, soaps, yeah. and other beauty. So listen, so here's the thing, Aaron. So, so a lot of these products, we would just export in raw form and would get processed outside of Africa. Yes. The whole aim is to try and encourage more processing yes. and final products out of these countries and consumption processing and consumption, consumption because we're not consuming right. as africans exactly. right okay. so, so tell me what why are you why are you at the trade fair why did you come all the way to durban and what do you hope to achieve we brought 20 small businesses like uh, b universe um, cosmetics to introduce them to the markets in southern africa as well yeah. as east africa as part of promoting before we head to our next break, let's catch up with some more of the people at the fair. Great Thank to be you. here with the, the Nigerian You're friends. You're most welcome. We're always uh, happy to see you. Okay, so uh, oil is one of the most important commodities out of Nigeria. Absolutely. And indeed, this is just one part of the oil in, of the Ulaja oil yeah. industry. And, and, you're, and you're able to process this. Yes, and this is being processed into engine oil, lubrication oil, things like that. And Nigeria has always had a problem with truly processing oil mm. and now you're moving more into that, right? We are moving all into that, as you know, apart from this which has already been in, in operation for some time, yeah. we are also now going into bigger manufacturing capacities and the production of uh, polypropylene and other petrochemical products. So the range of oil products is massive and I think our expectation is that we will continue to explore new opportunities in this sector even as the oil industry itself seems to be going down. Like declining, exactly. But you want to capture as much of the value chain as Ab absolutely possible. Absolutely. But Nigeria is trying to diversify its economy away from oil. You're trying to industrialize, right? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the point. Absolutely. And the issue really is to try and look at the value chains across industrial sectors. From, for instance, the textile industry, the leather industry, where we're looking at the entire value chain from cotton to yarn to yeah. fabric and to actually uh, clothe it. How important is intra-Africa trade going to be oh, for the, these Nigerian businesses? It's critical because frankly, if we can satisfy the African demand for that, for the next 10 years, yeah. we'll only export if we want to export, not yeah. because there's no market. I love coming 
coming to Lagos. I love coming to Nigeria. Next yes. time I see you, yes. we'll see Pan uh, African Nigerian businesses. Absolutely, doing really well. and and you'll be you'll be surprised. Most of them will be below 30 years of age. Young people really with the drive, with enthusiasm to access the the, the global market. But first, the African market. So I'm curious. The continental free trade area is super exciting and this means we can increase trade across the continent. How likely is it that we can pull this piece of policy off into reality? Well, you know, what gives me comfort is this, this is an initiative that's been decades in the making. We've been talking about a continental African economic community for, for decades. And for us to get to this point where we can actually sign and ratify this, this, this very groundbreaking agreement. How close are we to getting harmonization? Actually, you'd be surprised. There's uh, a number of very interesting developments. One-stop border posts. There yeah. have been uh, quite a few of those across the region that have been uh, gaining ground. And we've also seen um, a lot of simplification of cross-border controls. Uh, blocks, roadblocks were very common some years ago. Today, uh, many roadblocks have been lifted. Why are you here and what role does Believe in Africa have at a trade fair? I've been a big uh, advocate for intra-Africa trade out of Washington. I've been writing a lot about the continental free trade agreement, the potential job creation and encouraging the African diaspora to invest more in the continental trade area. So that's why I'm here and I'm looking forward to engage with more people like you, looking at all the, 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 the exhibit. Uh, the African SMEs that are showcasing their products and also look at the creative industry. I want you to tell me a little bit about the African Women for Innovation and Entrepreneurship Forum and what you have achieved and what you're hoping to achieve. We are a Pan-African organization, non-profit, and what we do is that we drive women uh, leadership and women entrepreneurship on the continent. We work to close the gender gaps in entrepreneurship in, uh, in Africa. Have you seen an impact of your efforts? Thousands of them so far since we started. Um, I was um, started in 2015. Um, then in 2017, we started uh, developing these programs. And so far we have trained more than directly trained more than 2,000 uh, women uh, business, uh, businesses, and these businesses have gone ahead to scale, you know, creating jobs. What are the, the biggest gaps that you are helping fill? Yeah, the, one of the biggest gaps is the skills gap. And because of this... Um, is that the biggest problem? Not money? Yeah, um, not m money is a problem, but if you give money to somebody who is not skilled, who cannot manage business, that money is wasted. Yeah. So you start with skills. And um, um, because of the importance, because of that uh, uh, vision, we have just recently uh, become signatory to the IFC's uh, principles of learning. It's an international benchmark you know, of uh, learning that must be sustainable, impactful, uh, inclusive, and scalable. So you design learning systems, learning um, skills, entrepreneurship skills, that must address these four issues because when they cannot scale, after the uh, learning, it's not it. When it's, it's not sustainable, it's not it. If it doesn't have impact in their business, in their communities, and in making them create jobs, you know, and other uh, things, it's not it. And then it must be inclusive. Are we going to see any fundamental big changes and shifts in the way we trade in Africa? Well, you know, I can tell you from my own experience, I've been presiding over a trade finance operation among other things and we've seen huge growth in cross-border business between for instance Morocco and Ethiopia. We've done almost half a billion dollars of, of trade between those two new, countries. And this is new, right? This is since uh, two, two, ACTA. three years old. Okay. Two, two, three years old. And oh. we've also seen um, huge investments coming from South Africa into the DR Congo, into Rwanda, into Zimbabwe, into Ethiopia. And we've been part of those, those projects. We've seen South African corporates really uh, pull up their sleeves and start investing across borders. Connecting Africa in association with Afrexim Bank. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I think uh, for those of us who are in Durban, that uh, clip gives us. Um, 
very powerful uh, retrospective of what happened and how it felt. We could have, it's just that we didn't have time today, uh, Your Excellencies. The BBC ran very similar content. CNBC ran similar content. And um, we got massive support across the board from our uh, um, members of the press, for which we thank you. We are now going to go into a session where we'll share further information. And um, at this stage, I'm just going to share a bit of housekeeping, which I would have left later. But I wanted to point out that this is a hybrid event. It's being streamed live on social media networks and our handles, uh, as well as complemented by various media house um, efforts in that area. So um, while physically we will have an opportunity to ask questions, during the press re, uh, uh, conference itself. For those who are logging in remotely, um, as we share this information, if you have questions, please uh, just uh, use the Q&A button on the platform and ask your question. Please remember to add your name and the media house that you represent. Um, I'd like now to welcome Mrs. Kanayu Awani, Managing Director of Intra-Africa Trade Initiative at Afraxim Bank, to further share with us. Welcome. Good morning. Your Excellencies and members of the press, please allow me to stand on already established protocols. Let me also join um, and welcome you all to today's press conference. My task this morning is to announce updated information of our achievements at the Intra-African Trade Fair 2021 that held in Durban. But before I do so, let me start by providing some background. We framed IATF 2021 as an opportunity to expose African businesses to an integrated market of 1.2 billion people in a, in a, in a global, in an economy of uh, $3, billion, $3 trillion in GDP. So it's always good to say you know, to, that the trade fair has already been mentioned by Barbada is not an end in itself. We set out to deal with the issue of lack of access to trade and market information. Yesterday there was a discussion on infrastructure. While infrastructure is very important in driving in traffic and trade, we do think that there are more important factors, and one of them is, the, is lack of access to trade and market information. And that's what the, the gap and information asymmetry that the trade fair um, was going to address. So now, you'll recall that on 21st of November, which was the closing ceremony of IETF 2021, we announced some preliminary statistics in terms of our performance, but it was essentially, as we said, provisional and six days of, of the, of the uh, program, because it ended on the seventh day. We also advised that we'll you know, keep updating. We've already had some updates. And today, um, based on information from the organizers of the various work streams, of various verticals, the exhibition, the conference uh, program, the trade and, and uh, investment forum, the creatives the program, and what have you, we have obtained um, final numbers, you know, but I use the word final, you know, I'll have to qualify it. Um, and you'll see why as we go along. So I'm happy to, and I have the honor of announcing those final numbers. You recall that um, on that day we announced that exhibitors were 1,160. Um, we have landed at the total number of exhibitors of 1,501. 
that participated at the trade fair against a target of 1,100 that we set for ourselves. Of the 1,501 exhibitors, a total of 1,287 were on site. They were physical exhibitors, whereas another 214 participated virtually as exhibitors on the IATA virtual platform. You will know that you, will, that you recall that the trade fair was a hybrid of physical as well as on the platform, on what we call the IATA virtual platform. Of the number of physical, um, one, of, out of the 1,287 physical exhibitors, 156 were from the creative industry, Canex, and 77 from the youth startup program, and another 43 from the automotive industry as exhibitors. The others and the, uh, the bulk of the exhibitors were from various sectors and subsectors ranging from agriculture, agro-processing, manufacturing, construction, uh, pharmaceuticals, and services. In terms of number of participating countries as exhibitors, we had a total of 69 countries um, that exhibited uh, or participated in the exhibition, out of which 46 were African countries. The rest of the countries were from obviously non-African countries, and there were 23 of them. Number of participants overall. We had a huge and staggering participation level of 32,541 people that participated in the trade fair. Of these 32,551 persons, 12,985, let's say 13,000, participated virtually. The balance, 19,556, participated virtually um, on the IATF virtual platform. So the total was, as I mentioned, 32,541 participants at the trade fair overall. And the participants were from 128 countries globally across the, across the world. Trade and investment deals concluded. Again, you know, we had um, B2Bs, B2Gs as part of the vertical, and G2Gs now, government to government exchanges as part of the um, verticals of the trade fair. This was a designed, as I mentioned, to bring buyers and sellers together, investors and investment opportunities, you know, and uh, also a platform to bring financiers to participate in the financing program for deals concluded. Consequently, we had 54, five, sorry, I'm sorry, 542 deals concluded during the event. And in terms of value, a total value of 42.1 billion world of trade, investments and financing deals were concluded. So Excellencies, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as has been said over and over again, this point to a very successful, resoundingly successful program. And with these successes, we are continuing to close the gap on access to trade, investments, and market information the critical issue that we set out to solve. The numbers will change along the way, may, may change, but what's also important is the, is the success stories that we are beginning to gather. And should there be further changes, we'll use them to, towards for IATF 2023. But it's interesting to know some of the testimonies that are already beginning to, we are beginning to gather. Testimonies of, for instance, um, the Angolan um, governments through their managers of their food security program 
who are currently on road shows across Africa from Mozambique to Mal Malawi to redirect their um, supplies of food. They will normally you know, buy a lot of their food stuff from their grains, the sugar, their um, vegetable oil, you know, their salt from outside the continent. But today, in various African co countries and uh, um, private sector institutions to supply, to buy, procure their food, food program uh, requirements, food reserve requirements. Because of the infrastructure need on the continent is so huge. And um, we, it was also an opportunity. Construction was one of those areas. EPC, engineering, procurement, and construction was all areas I get, got a lot of, um, what I say, mileage. Uh, it's also an area where we play very actively as Africa Bank, trying to support African countries and African businesses. Um, engineering and constructing companies to take part and participate in that huge market of um, infrastructure requirements. An Egyptian EPC contractor will let us know that they signed contracts in excess of, of about $1 billion you know, from across the continent as well. We received, we focused a lot on buyers. And the reason we did that was it, we realized that a number of buyers were, there were a lot of buyers across the continent who are buying from countries outside the continent, you know, Asia, Europe, and what have you. So what we tried to do was to see how we can redirect those, their trade, you know, from buying to come to the trade fair to see what they can procure. And even with that, um, we had some 50, 542, you no, know, there are about over 500 um, buyers that participated in that program, and a number of the deals that we I just highlighted were those from those buyers. As um, what we're trying to do with those buyers now um, is to develop the program a lot further, you know, to see that they they become the anchor of our export trading company initiative which is a program that we're also partnering with the AFCFTA Secretariat. So you all recall that this journey started with the first edition of IETF in 2018 in Cairo. That's also surpassed expectations. So in 2021, we even stretched our targets and, and here we are. Um, so that despite the significantly tougher socioeconomic environment last year due to COVID-19 pandemic and all the exigencies, the expectations were all surpassed as it were. And it speaks to a great potential for Africa and Africans as a whole that we must continue to develop. We expect President Bass and Joe to thank everybody who con contributed in making the IETF 2021, the resounding circus that it was. And we look forward to seeing you all in 2023 in our vision Cote d'Ivoire, where we expect to hold another record breaking program towards transforming our continent. Thank you very much for listening. remain many obstacles to be lifted to reverse the fact that 85% of goods traded in Africa come from outside Africa. We can no longer have a situation where the resources of Africa add value in other economies while so many of our people live in poverty and conditions. TIA's trade fair is focusing on new African continental free trade agreements. We look forward to the opportunities that will arise from a single market. The African continental free trade area, we can double our African trade by 2030. 
And come on, we call on Oh Africa, come let us be our dream fall Together we grow stronger and united Paint up the sky There's a confluence of rivers this led to civilizations Egypt with its pyramids of stone, with its mathematics inspired by looking up at the stars, did you not know that Europe is a descendant of Rome and Rome is a descendant of Greece and Greece is a descendant of Egypt? This Constrained times, as uh, His Excellency Baba President um, Obasanjo said. So imagine what we are going to do in the next edition. And we'd li like to turn our focus forward to activating 
the IATF 2023 today, and I'd like to invite Dr. Genmo Zanamwe, who's Head of Trade Facilitation at the Intra-African Trade Initiative at Afraxim Bank. Genmo, please. Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Program Director, Your Excellencies, uh, good morning. I will walk you through some of the key action items that we need to now focus on. We saw that IATF 2021 came, it was a resounding success. We have now started charting the way for another resounding success for IATF 2023. So what I'm going to do is basically to, talk you, to take you through some of the key things that we really need to start doing now to prepare for IATF 2023. So if you can uh, roll the sl slides quickly, I think uh, the chair has uh, highlighted uh, that we had great attendance from heads of states. And uh, taking a cue from that and with the guidance from the chair, we are now going to uh, focus on getting more heads of states. This is now a challenge for Cote d'Ivoire. And uh, I think with the support of uh, uh, His Excellency uh, President Obasanjo, we hope to get uh, more heads of states uh, from his region to make sure that uh, we beat this target. If you also move on to the next uh, slide, I think the IATF is a very uh, composite program with a number of verticals. We call them verticals. and you can actually see that we are essentially maintaining the eight verticals that we had for 2021, but we'll also be looking at enhancing some of these uh, verticals. The trade exhibition will always be there where we get countries to take country pavilions. We'll have companies to also take their pavilions and individuals to take their stands. So that will still be pretty much there. And we'll also, uh, you have the Trade and Investment Forum, as we heard from MD. This is going to be a practical session where we discuss the key issues that we need to address to improve intra-African trade. And this is where also the AFCFTA Secretariat plays a vital role to bring in some of the things that we are doing under the AFCFTA to make it practical and relevant to all the stakeholders, including women, youth, and SMEs. We will also be looking at uh, the uh, CANEX, the Creative Africa Nexus, as MD highlighted earlier on. This is a very important initiative, and this year, Your Excellency, we will be looking at hosting CANEX weekend in Cote d'Ivoire as a prelude now to the IATF 2023. We'll be working with you. We'll be inviting all the players in the creative industry to make sure that we support that critical component of the creative, and this is where we've got a lot of young people who have got very excellent ideas. It could be in fashion, it could be in music, it could be film, even sports. So this is basically what we are trying to do with Canex Weekend this year. We also have got uh, the biz business to business, business to government. This is where the 42 billion deals is coming from. So we will still maintain that, but we actually want to make it bigger and better and ensure that more of the deals are also among the SMEs, the women, and uh, some of these uh, people who can actually contribute positively to uh, transforming the continent. We will also, of course, maintain the IATF virtual, as uh, you also heard from the numbers. Some participated physically, some participated virtually through our virtual trade fair platform, and we will maintain that feature and uh, we already have got a number of booths that are already on the IATF virtual. Business is actually going to continue on that IATF virtual as we speak. Even though we closed IATF 2021, this virtual trade fair will allow the business people to continue interacting to ensure that uh, business uh, continues. Then, of course, there's the country days. And uh, as we had in uh, IATF 2021, we had uh, countries that took uh, country days. We had Egypt, we had South Africa, Cote d'Ivoire, Nigeria. We are now looking at uh, inviting other countries to start now 
dressing. It's, the competition this time is going to be fierce. It's going to be stiff. So we are already opening for country days to start uh, doing the bidding. And most importantly, we had a dedicated youth program, which was uh, basically uh, being uh, championed by the African Union. We called the AU Youth Program, where we brought in young people to showcase their talent, their creative ideas, and we're trying to link them with uh, venture capitals, finan financiers, and other people who can support them. We also have, we had the automotive industry uh, component, which was very successful. It was the first edition of the automotive show that we had. We had the exhibition, the automotive forum, and the B2B engagements. And uh, we will maintain it in 2023, but we are going to make it bigger. We will be calling it the Africa Automotive Show. This will be a go-to platform for all the players in the automotive industry. And we really need to support this sector because it is critical in terms of catalyzing industrialization. So these are some of the verticals that we have. And if you can move on quickly to the next one. Yes. So you can move to the next. Yes, I think uh, this is basically already covered. I've already covered the exhibition. You can scroll to the next. And uh, I've, I've talked about the Trade and Investment Forum, which is a practical one. And uh, also the Canix, I've, I've already highlighted uh, all, all these. Just in interest of time, we just need to uh, yes, keep moving. So yes, youth, I, I covered it in the IATF virtual platform, B2B. Yes, so this is what I want to focus on now. So where we are, we really need to start preparing for the IATF 2023. We have got uh, a lot of uh, players in the room and others have joined online. The first call that we have to the media is that you are the key people who are going to help us to carry the stories, the narrative, the story that we are trying to carry through the trade fair is that we need to use the trade fair to transform the continent. How do we do that? We share trade and market information to get buyers and sellers to connect. And the way in which you as the media carry these stories, this would actually be part of your policies and your reporting. You should help us to actually push this narrative of promoting intra-African trade because it's only those regions, as you can see in Europe, in Asia, that have increased intra-African trade that have been able to actually develop and create jobs for their people. So this is basically a partnership that we want to continue building with the media to ensure that we support this important uh, initiative of supporting intra-African trade and the implementation of the AFCFTA. We are also uh, looking at uh, continue, uh, continuing to work with our partners to now mobilize various players. We are looking at exhibitors, as I highlighted, Buyers, they are very important to any success of a trade fair. So we'll be looking forward to your support to, to ensure that you identify the buyers that can interact with exhibitors. We are looking at also investors that will engage with the countries. Countries will bring their investment opportunities. So that will be an opportunity to now to twin the countries and the investors. We are also looking at players in the various sectors that I've mentioned, the automotive industry, the creative industry. We are looking at now trying to get all the key stakeholders to start registering and participating in the trade fair. Most importantly, we need sponsors. So we have already opened our sponsorship mobilization campaign, and uh, we look forward to working with everybody in this room and those that are listening online to ensure that we start getting sponsors to engage with us to mobilize resources that are required to make the IATF in Cote d'Ivoire a success. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Gainmo, for condensing such rich, vivid, and uh, you know, dense information in, in, in such a short period of time. And as he has said, he's urged uh, you, you're the storytellers who transmit these ideas and uh, the enthusiasm. And 
that enables the African continent to translate all this vision into action. I'd now like to invite our host for IETF 2023, represented by His Excellency Tiemoko Moriko, Ambassador of the Republic of Cote d'Ivoire in Ghana and Togo, to come and share with us his remarks. Your Excellency. Merci beaucoup. On va parler un peu français maintenant. Vous me permettrez de présenter les excuses du ministre Suleiman Djarasouba, ministre du Commerce et de l'Industrie de Côte d'Ivoire, qui aurait bien voulu être présent avec nous ce matin. Mais pour des contraintes de calendrier, n'a pas pu effectuer le déplacement. Il nous a donc instruit de le représenter à cette importante rencontre. J'ai la lourde responsabilité donc de prendre la parole en son nom, avec l'honneur que ça représente. C'est bon, tout le monde a son casque. Vous avez votre casque. Son Excellence excellent chef Olusegu Sanjo, ancien président de la République fédérale du Nigeria, président du conseil consultatif de la foire commerciale intra-africaine, IATF, Professeur Bénédicte Orama, président d'Afrexim Bank. Excellence, Monsieur Wamkele Mene, secrétaire général de la zone de libre-échange continentale africaine, chers frères. Excellence, Monsieur le doyen du groupe africain au niveau des ambassadeurs africains. Excellence, Mesdames et Messieurs les ambassadeurs et membres du corps diplomatique. Madame Kanayo Awani, directrice générale de l'initiative pour le commerce intra-africain d'Afrexim Bank. Mesdames et Messieurs les représentants d'institutions et organisations internationales, chers amis de la presse, honorables invités, Mesdames et Messieurs, je voudrais avant tout propos remercier chaleureusement l'Union africaine à travers la ZLECAF et l'Afrexim Bank pour la mise en place de la foire commerciale intra-africaine IATF qui est une initiative visant à opérationnaliser la zone de libre-échange continentale africaine, ZLECAF, par la promotion des échanges commerciaux intra-africains. Je voudrais également, au nom de son Excellence, M. Alassane Ouattara, président de la République, du gouvernement et du peuple ivoirien, exprimer toute notre gratitude aux membres du Conseil consultatif, notamment à son Excellence, Chief Olusegu Nobasanjo, M. Albert Mouchanga, le professeur Bénédicte Orama, M. Jean-Louis Ekra et à tous leurs collègues. En effet, après l'Égypte en 2018 et l'Afrique du Sud en 2021, notre pays, la Côte d'Ivoire, a été désigné pour abriter la troisième édition de la foire commerciale intra-africaine à Abidjan en 2023. Excellences, Mesdames et Messieurs, Honorables invités, chers amis de la presse, L'IATF se présente désormais, et ce depuis son édition inaugurale, comme l'événement commercial majeur le plus important de l'Afrique tout entière. Et pour cause, non seulement il rassemble des exposants de toute l'Afrique, mais également et surtout il permet d'attirer plusieurs milliers de visiteurs du monde entier, favorisant ainsi la conclusion d'accords commerciaux et de partenariats d'affaires importants. L'IATF constitue ainsi une véritable locomotive pour la bonne marge de la zone de libre-échange continentale africaine qui constitue, et il faut le rappeler, un vaste marché de plus de 1,2 milliard de consommateurs et avec un PIB combiné d'environ 3 000 milliards de dollars américains pour les 54 États membres de l'Union africaine. L'IATF est donc une initiative louable présentant des enjeux de développement multisectoriel pour notre continent. Aussi, la Côte d'Ivoire s'est réjouie avec un brin de fierté d'abriter cette troisième édition à Abidjan. À ce stade de mon propos, mesdames et messieurs, qu'il me soit permis de souligner que l'engagement de l'État ivoirien au plus haut sommet pour le déroulement de cet événement est total et entier. En effet, le Conseil des ministres du mercredi 12 janvier 2022 
a accordé son agrément pour la tenue de la troisième édition de l'IATF au Parc des Expositions d'Abidjan et a instruit la mise en place d'un comité national d'organisation en collaboration avec le secteur privé en vue de garantir le succès de cet important événement en terre ivoirienne. Aussi, je voudrais vous rassurer que la Côte d'Ivoire, mon pays, prendra toutes les dispositions nécessaires pour assurer un plein succès à cette manifestation en assumant pleinement toutes les responsabilités qui lui incombent à la matière, sachant que les objectifs de l'IATF 2023 cadrent parfaitement avec ceux de son plan national de développement 2021-2025. Excellences, Mesdames et Messieurs, chers amis de la presse, l'IATF 2023 offre donc une opportunité certaine, aussi bien à la Côte d'Ivoire qu'au reste du, de l'Afrique, pour se remettre assurément des impacts de la pandémie de la COVID-19, qui a eu des effets distorsifs sur les chaînes d'approvisionnement mondial et partant sur toutes les économies de la planète. L'Afrique tout entière et tous ses partenaires sont donc invités à saisir cette occasion de relance économique à travers l'IATF 2023. Il est important de noter que ce rendez-vous des affaires se tiendra dans un parc d'exposition flambant neuf, moderne, sur un espace de 35 hectares dont la fin des travaux est prévue avant la fin de cette année 2022. Il convient de mentionner également que le hall 1 d'une superficie de 7200 carrés, une capacité pouvant aller jusqu'à 6000 places, et le bâtiment administratif d'une superficie de 3024 carrés sont déjà disponibles, tandis que la convention de saint reur de plus de 8100 carrés pour une capacité de 5200 places est en construction. Avec son architecture futuriste, et le standing impressionnant qui le caractérise du parc d'exposition d'Abidjan, comme il a été baptisé, répond aux normes strictes internationales. Concernant l'industrie hôtelière, elle est en plein essor en Côte d'Ivoire, comme vous le savez, avec l'implantation de grandes chaînes hôtelières dans la capitale économique ivoirienne, Abidjan. Il s'agit entre autres du groupe Accor avec les hôtels Sofitel, Ivoire, 423 chambres, Novotel, 258 chambres, le Pullman, 265 chambres, le Moven Peak, 160 chambres, le Radisson Blue, 261 chambres, Azalaï Hotel, 200 chambres, Sin Hotel, 149 chambres, Onombo, 118 chambres, etc., etc., et j'en passe. En somme, pour le centre d'Abidjan, on dénombre 73 établissements hôteliers avec une capacité totale de 4 853 lits. D'autres infrastructures hôtelières supplémentaires sont en cours de construction et seront disponibles avant 2023. Au niveau de la sécurité, le gouvernement a entrepris des réformes pour garantir l'intégrité de son territoire et assurer la libre circulation des personnes et des biens ce qui a permis à notre pays ainsi d'améliorer l'indice de sécurité des Nations Unies, qui est passé de 3 points à 1,2 en 2015, puis à 1 en 2018. Nous attendons les résultats de 2020. En outre, le gouvernement ivoirien entend soutenir vigoureusement toutes ces réformes avec la consolidation de son environnement sociopolitique et sécuritaire, notamment par le renforcement du dialogue entre les partis politiques, l'amélioration de la confiance entre les forces, le renforcement des capacités techniques opérationnelles des forces armées en vue de faire face à toute attaque terroriste. De plus, le gouvernement ivoirien s'engage à renforcer la sécurité générale autour du parc des expositions et des hôtels accrédités qui accueilleront les délégations de l'IATF 2023. Excellences, Mesdames et Messieurs, chers amis de la presse, je voudrais par ailleurs vous rassurer que la Côte d'Ivoire a acquis de nombreuses expériences en matière d'organisation d'événements de cette envergure, réunissant d'importantes délégations internationales. 
On peut citer entre autres le Salon international de l'agriculture et des ressources animales d'Abidjan, le Sahara, le Salon international du tourisme d'Abidjan, CITA, l'African Growth Opportunity Act, dont le 18e forum international s'est tenu à Abidjan en 2019, avec 36 pays participants sur les 39 bénéficiaires de ce programme. On peut également souligner le sommet Union africaine-Union européenne qui s'est tenu en 2017, ainsi que plus récemment le 27e congrès de l'Union postale universelle. En outre, notre pays s'apprête à accueillir la Coupe d'Afrique des Nations, la CAN 2023. Autant d'arguments qui nous amènent à fonder notre espoir sur la réussite effective de l'IATF 2023 en Côte d'Ivoire. Surtout avec la collaboration de tous, et plus particulièrement de l'Égypte et de l'Afrique du Sud, qui l'ont déjà organisé avec succès avant cette édition d'Abidjan. Excellences, Mesdames et Messieurs, chers amis de la presse, avant de clore mon propos, permettez-moi de renouveler la gratitude et la reconnaissance du gouvernement et du peuple ivoirien à toute l'Afrique pour avoir confié à la Côte d'Ivoire l'organisation de la troisième édition de la foire commerciale intra-africaine. On this note, IATF 2023 is open for registration and Côte d'Ivoire looks forward to welcome you. Thank you so very much. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency. Um, His Excellency is going to uh, officially unveil the opening of IOTF 2023. So, members of the press, please. Okay, we are going to do a countdown to the opening of IOTF 2023. So on a count of three, two, one. <laughs> Applause, please. Paint out the sky with the proud colors of your flags And say goodbye to the darkness of the past We're stepping forward, we're rising up Oh, Africa, our time is now Paint out the sky with the proud colors of your flags And say goodbye to the darkness of the past We're stepping forward Um, as I mentioned earlier, it's hybrid, so we are already receiving some questions on the online uh, platform. Please, when you send this through the platform, please um, include your name and the outlet uh, that you come from. And um, 
In terms of ground rules, we will have one microphone. The microphone is to your left, to my right. And this is because of COVID uh, protocols. We are trying not to pass too many things around. So if you've got a question, please just rise, walk over to where my colleague is, ask the question of, uh, of our panelists. Today, I will ask, um, I will ask His Excellency, uh, Chief Olusev Duno Basanjo, please. Yes, no? So thank you very much. On stage, uh, from right to left, or from your left to right, this is Professor Orama, President and Chairman of the Board of Directors of uh, Preximbank. Bank, His Excellency Olusegun Obasanjo, former President of Nigeria and Chair of IATF Advisory Council. His Excellency Wamkele Mene, uh, Secretary General of AFCFTA Secretariat, and His Excellency, the Ambassador Tiemoko, Moriko, Ambassador of the Republic of Cote d'Ivoire in Ghana and Togo. And they will be fielding your questions. We also have Mrs. Kanayo Awani, MD of uh, Intra-Africa Trade Initiative in our midst, near the front row. So if there are some really detailed questions or uh, substantive ones that she's better placed to answer, then I will call upon her. But uh, this is your opportunity, please, uh, our guests from the media, to, um, to ask any questions that you may have. So I welcome the brave soul who is going to ask the first question, please, live. Feel free. Walk to the mic, say your name, uh, which country you come from, which media outlet, ask your question in full transparency, and we will get an appropriate answer from our eminent um, guests today. Thank you. Carry on. Thank you very much, Sal. Um, my name is Hope Mosatike. Um, I write for Business Day um, Nigeria. Okay, all right. My name is Hope Moses Ashika for Business Day um, Nigeria. Thank you all, SARS, for the successful com completion of um, uh, 2021 IATF. My question is, we are there um, some of the countries in Africa um, that did not participate in the I I 2021 IATF if there are, is there any sanction against them? Secondly, what targets have you set for 2023 AITF? And how do you think that you can achieve that target? Thank you. Thank you very much. So those were two questions. One was, were there any countries that did not attend IATF 2021, and what are the sanctions of, um, of not supporting? And then a broad overview of targets, which we covered earlier. Uh, President Rama, could I ask you to, to comment, if you could, or uh, through the channel? Yeah, 
Uh, thank you very much, uh, um, Baba, Excellencies. The participation in the IATF is voluntary. Uh, it's, it's not mandatory. Uh, countries will determine whether they see value. However, as the Secretary General of the AFCFT Secretariat will tell you, the Council of Ministers of Trade take it very seriously uh, that they all commit, and they committed last time, that they will be there because they see this as a very important AUFCFTA initiative. Now, with regard to the numbers, uh, 46 out of the 55 African countries are represented. 69 countries overall participated. Uh, that means about 23 were non-African. But let me focus on the African side. Some of the countries that didn't participate we are those excluded from the AU events due to developments in those countries. Um, you know, some countries have gone to certain things and that AU has policy about those things. So those countries were not allowed to participate. There were countries uh, that were still going to had problems with the COVID. Uh, because they had not changed their internal policies about going outside uh, to do things of, that would gather people in large numbers. So those were the two main factors that led uh, to the nine countries that did not, uh, or, uh, about nine countries, I think, that didn't participate. Um, the, my first statement answered the second question, sanctions. It's voluntary, so there are no sanctions. With regard to targets, I think they were put out there. The target always is to have all countries participate, as all African countries participate. And we also encourage African development partners. But be aware that the non-African countries that we allow to participate are those that will be exhibiting things that Africa needs to promote in traffic and trade, especially investment goods. It's not for a country to come and exhibit something that would not actually be done intra-regionally, because this is traffic and trade. But we welcome countries who come to exhibit certain kinds of technology, and things that are new to Africa. So we think those are useful, and that's why they are allowed uh, to participate. Other targets have not fully been set in terms of the amount we are expecting and the numbers. But in terms of number of countries, we expect all 55 AU member states to participate. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency. With, I, I just wanted to find out with your permission whether, okay, well, thank you very much. Next question, please. All right, my name is Ebenezer Sabute from JFM here in Ghana. Uh, my first question has to do with SMEs who may want to participate, but uh, due to lack of financial muscle, they may not be able to finance their uh, participation, whether you have any special packages for them. And then secondly, in the era, we are in the era of border closures on the continent, uh, what is the strategy to getting some of these people who may want to participate, move their goods and services on the cheaper cost? Thank you. Thank you very much. So to clarify, um, I got your second question, which was about uh, the constraints of border areas, and your first was about what support SMEs uh, uh, will receive. Uh, President, with your permission, could we hand it to His Excellency the Secretary General, please, to, to comment, especially on the cross-border constraints and what we seek to achieve with SMEs, please. Okay. 
Well, thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency President uh, Obasanjo and uh, President Orama and uh, Ambassador next to me. Um, it's a pleasure to have you here at the Secretariat of the AFCFTA. I will be brief uh, in answering the, the second part of the question. Well, as you know, the, the, um, the AFCFTA aims to reduce barriers to trade uh, and investment across the continent. We now have 39 countries who are uh, uh, state parties to the agreement establishing the AFCFTA. That means that these countries accept that um, they have obligations under the agreement, particularly in relation to transit of, um, of goods uh, that is subject to the Annex on uh, Customs Procedures, uh, the Annex on Transit, uh, as well as the Annex on uh, Trade Facilitation. So there are inbuilt rules in the agreement uh, that, that um, we all agreed to, that we have to allow goods to transit under certain conditions, in an expedited manner, without uh, uh, discrimination based on origin of country of those goods, the procedures that uh, customs procedures have to uh, customs authorities have to apply have to be standardised. We have already started working on that. Uh, so it is, of course, a matter of deep concern to us that um, uh, uh, customs procedures and the transit of goods. Uh, is uh, um, uneven across the continent. If I can give you an example, on the, the corridor from uh, Abidjan to uh, Lagos, uh, uh, we have been uh, focusing along with the uh, African Bank, uh, ECOWAS, we have been focusing on uh, finding interventions to improve the competitiveness of the corridor because we all know that uh, it may take sometimes 12 to 15 days for goods to transit from, from, um, from Lagos uh, to Abidjan because of the, um, the customs procedures along the border. So we've got to have a focused intervention on that to make sure that, uh, that uh, all our trade corridors are competitive across, across the continent, particularly in relation to transit of goods. It's going to take some time. It is going to be uh, a difficult and long task to get customs authorities to have a uh, coordinated approach, to have systems that speak to uh, one another. Uh, there are some countries that share a border and yet customs authorities don't have a common system uh, so these are things that uh, we have to correct uh, so that uh, the transit of goods uh, can be consistent with the obligations that are set out in the agreement. Regarding the, the, on the, uh, uh, the, the participation of SMEs in the Intra-Africa Trade Fair, I will leave it to, uh, to His Excellency the President to respond to that. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, President Rama, and Secretary General, and Ambassador. Thank you very much. I want to, uh, and the Director of Communication, I want to thank uh, all of you and um, the members of the press. Um, I, I, I just want to say that the SMEs are encouraged, in fact, particularly encouraged. And um, uh, they are encouraged by their countries of origin. 
the uh, number of um, uh, assistance uh, or measures of assistance given to them. I know, for instance, in the case of Nigeria, um, they are giving assistance in transportation and assistance in different forms. But um, uh, really the issue is that we particularly want to encourage SMEs because they are really the backbone of the economy, uh, the economies in African countries. Um, and uh, that we uh, definitely are doing. And um, I, I don't know, I believe that if you get these, the uh, statistics of SMEs, and in fact, most of the uh, uh, companies that uh, came to exhibit are SMEs, all those uh, uh, people showing garments and uh, uh, little things made from oil and from uh, fruits and things. Um, as I went around, I feel really encouraged by uh, the number of SMEs uh, participating. Um, I, I will take leave of you now. I, I just want to say that it has been a pleasure for me to participate uh, on uh, this one show, reviewing the progress or the result of last year and looking forward and uh, formally uh, um, saying we are ready to go for 2023. And I hope I will be able to meet all of you in uh, Abidjan uh, next year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, President. Say Jenny. Thank you very much. Thank you, President. What did you do? Okay. Thank you. We are blessed to have. Uh, yes, yes, please, sir. The president. Okay. Just let me add to what uh, His Excellency President Passenger uh, said. Uh, in 2021, uh, we paid particular attention on ensuring that SMEs especially youth SMEs participated. Um, we went um, to, to a great extent to encourage countries to support them, but we also supported them. I think we sponsored about 30 ourselves. We also waived exhibition fees for them. And, um, and those in the AU pavilion, we also had AE trade, group, supporting some of them who came. So in essence, we, we as a Frexin Bank covered uh, 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 about 30 selected to a competitive uh, process and also waived uh, exhibition fees for all, I think all the SMEs and that, that we are in the youth pavilion out of assistance we did in 2021. And we'll be looking to see how we get uh, foundations uh, to uh, play a more active role in supporting SMEs in exhibiting in the coming trade fair. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Rama. I'm going to uh, switch to a question we've received uh, remotely through the platform from Melvin O.B. Nuanko. The question is, is IATF an annual or biannual event? Are there criteria for choosing a country location? So uh, 
while the first half might be obvious, but it might um, maybe be symbolic of some aspiration to have it. <laughs> that is so good that it needs to be more frequent, I don't know. But um, uh, the second part, uh, with permission, I'd like to, to address to our uh, ambassador from Cote d'Ivoire, be just because if their criteria for qualifying, they must have met all of them. So he might be in a, in a very uh, first-hand position to, to share with us his views on that. Let me remind you also that translation is ongoing in uh, English and French, so um, you can use your headset. Uh, son excellence. Je sais simplement que la Côte d'Ivoire s'est présentée comme candidate. Il y avait d'autres pays frais en compétition, on va dire. Mais je pense que pour éviter d'aller aux élections, il y a eu des négociations dans les couloirs qui ont fait que finalement on a été désigné. Je ne pense pas que ce soit une désignation élective, mais je pense plutôt que c'est... C'est pas une sorte de consensus qu'on cherche à tirer, peut-être de façon sous-régionale. Peut-être qu'il faut trouver la bonne formule. Ça s'est fait en Afrique du Sud, ça s'est fait en Égypte d'abord, en Afrique du Nord, ça s'est fait en Afrique du Sud. Venir en Afrique de l'Ouest peut-être, peut-être qui sait plus tard. Peut-être qu'il y a une sorte de rotation. En tous les cas, nous, on était candidats et on le voulait en même temps que d'autres. Et puis bon, le Conseil a décidé que c'était la Côte d'Ivoire, dont nous nous en félicitons. Je ne pense pas qu'il y ait des critères spécifiques. Je pense que si vous vous sentez prêt, que vous avez les infrastructures qu'il faut, je pense qu'on doit pouvoir vous désigner pour faire ça. Je laisse plutôt la question à, au patron de, <rire> de la structure pour nous éclairer davantage. Merci beaucoup. Merci, merci beaucoup. Bonne excellence. Uh, President, uh, my... Our... Well, thank you very much. Uh, really, I think the first thing, as the Excellency Ambassador said, is that you have to be interested in doing. And as you can imagine, uh, this is not a joke. So before you raise your hand, you have to also be sure you can host it. We are talking of um, at least 30 thousand square meters of exhibition space with high technology that can host um, conferences, creative activities, and be able to carry the complex equipment exhibitors bring. We are talking about having at least 15,000 bed spaces. We are talking about being able uh, to organize the security, being able also to have the capacity for air traffic, air travels to make it easy, and of course road and rail connections. I think these were the critical things uh, that um, the advisory council looks for. So any country that indicates interest, uh, at least to make sure that they have all of this. Sometimes uh, we have more than one country raising their hand, as happened in each case, actually. So a due diligence is then done. The advisory council sends people to go and check, and then the countries are then spoken to. After that, based on the criteria established, a decision is made on who to offer the opportunity to host. So that is um, uh, what we've done so far, uh, and that is how also Côte d'Ivoire emerged. Thank you. The next 
Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I'll invite the next question. Go ahead, please. Bonjour. Mon nom c'est Yusuf Kamagate, je suis le correspondant de Financial Afrique à Abidjan. Mm -hmm. J'aimerais savoir au niveau de la deuxième édition de l'IATF qui s'est passée à Durban, est-ce qu'on peut, peut quand même nous soutenir un peu sur les investissements, le pays qui a, plus, qui a réalisé plus de, de signatures d'investissement pendant cette fois-là Et aussi, si on peut aussi avoir une, une idée sur l'entreprise qui a réussi plus à attirer les investisseurs au niveau de cette fois -là. Il faut que vous, vous, vous parlez un peu doucement parce que je n'ai pas les, les casquettes. Mais je crois que les autres euh, ont entendu le, le, la question. Est-ce que vous pouvez... Je, je réponds Oui. Je veux savoir, au niveau de l'IATF, la deuxième édition, quel est le pays qui a réalisé plus de signatures d'investissement okay. Et aussi, si on peut avoir une idée sur l'entreprise aussi. Au niveau des entreprises qui ont signé des partenariats à la Cour du Sud, quelle est l'entreprise qui a réussi plus à attirer plus d'investisseurs Ok, 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 je crois que, que, que j'ai compris. So, um, yes, please, I'll, uh, through, through the chair, uh, invite uh, Mrs. Awani, please, MD. very much. I was saying that it's also it's important to note that when you ask that question, that there's an, uh, in, in the context of intra-African trade, there's an African country on both sides of the trade as a buyer or a seller. Um, so it's a very tricky question. But what I can do, what I can say to you is that I will try in that context to tell you the countries that accounted for, that had at least over a billion dollars of trade, either as a buyer or a seller, or an investor or, or, or an investee. And those countries were, and it's not in any particular order, Nigeria, Egypt, Angola, Algeria, Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. And South Africa, I'm sorry. And in terms of um, sectors, I'll uh, also highlight the, the sectors where we got so a contribution of over $1 billion. And those were construction and infrastructure. In fact, construction and infrastructure was the, was the most speaking to the, um, the demand for infrastructure. Um, we had agriculture, energy, financial services, ICT, logistics, manufacturing, mining, youth, the youth startup um, program as well. And, and um, there was a close one, which was under a billion dollars. All right, okay, um, which is health and pharmaceuticals. I hope that answers the question. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will uh, just um, take two questions from the online platform, and uh, then we'll go live again. But this is because they seem to me to be related, so we'll take them two at a time. This is from Adugna Haile, a young entrepreneur, one of the certified Africa's next champions by AU. He asks, I'm from Ethiopia. I have been one of the exhibitors of IATF 2021 at Durban, South Africa. Is there an opportunity to join you at Abidjan, Côte d'Ivoire, in 2023 by fulfilling the full packages on your behalf? If we understand that. But uh, Cynthia Eruo asks, what measures have been put in place to facilitate travel arrangements for participants to IATF 2023? 
So perhaps uh, they are re related. It's uh, it's about participation and travel for 2023. So uh, MD perhaps. Yeah, it's uh, the question. It says, is there an opportunity? The first one says, is there an opportunity to join you at Abidjan Cote d'Ivoire 2023 by fulfilling the full packages on your behalf? Now I don't understand what the full packages are. But the following question is just asking what measures have been put in place to facilitate travel arrangements for participants to IATF 2023. Um, full pa I, I don't get the <laughs> yeah, question of full package, but you know we welcome parties. If, if they attended uh, IATF 2021, um, they're welcome to also attend 2023. Yeah. And um, arrangements, Maybe the travel logistics, I don't know whether they're referring to air transport or is it visa, mm, you know. It must um, be visa, I think. Visa it could be visa related. Related. So um, that would be a question for the, His Excellency the Ambassador to, to answer. Yeah. Um, but it's all part of the, when the President Orama mentioned about the preparedness of a country to, to um, host, these are all the things that are put in place. He talked about uh, travels. You know, you know, and visa is a, is, a, is a big element of what we also look out for, visa arrangements. Okay, thank you. So, an excellence, s'il vous plaît. Merci beaucoup. Écoutez, moi, je pense que je, vous ai, je voulais rappeler dans la déclaration que le ministre m'a transmise, effectivement, il y a des... Au plan infrastructurel, au plan du, 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 du transport, Vous savez que euh, y a toutes les compagnies aériennes aujourd'hui sont desservent à Abidjan. Abidjan a deux aéroports principaux. L'aéroport international d'Abidjan, Port Boué, qui reçoit toutes les compagnies aériennes. Puis l'aéroport de Boaké, l'aéroport de Yamsokro et tout ça. Au niveau des visas, quand on a l'habitude, comme on a l'habitude de recevoir ce genre d'événements, il se trouve que toutes nos ambassades dans le monde, principalement en Afrique, bien évidemment, pour cet événement-là, vont recevoir des instructions du ministère des Affaires étrangères qui leur dira de faciliter l'obtention des visas à tous ceux qui voudraient venir à Abidjan pour cet événement-là. Là, il n'y a aucun problème par rapport à ça. Il y a la possibilité de s'inscrire en ligne également pour les visas. Les e-visas, aujourd'hui, ça se fait, ça marche complètement. Par exemple, s'il y a des, des, des frères africains qui ne sont pas de la CDAO, qui sont au Ghana, qui veulent partir à Abidjan, il n'y a pas de raison que on 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 l'ambassade est à leur disposition par rapport à... Vous ne citez que l'exemple du, du Ghana. Et ailleurs, c'est les mêmes instructions qu'on reçoit. Il n'y a pas de confusion par rapport à cela. On a souhaité avoir l'événement. Maintenant qu'on a l'événement, on ne fera pas de difficultés pour accueillir nos frères africains. Il n'y a pas de problème par rapport à ça. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. OK. Um, next question, please. My name is Edward Nyako. I, I work with Gan uh, GBC News. My question is, um, this Côte d'Ivoire one is going to be the fourth one. I want to find out whether there's a system in place to track and see progress made after the exhibition in terms of scaling up intra-African trade. Do you have a data to that effect? And secondly, I want to find out from um, um, His Excellency Juan Kemele about um, the Afro Champions Initiative to boost trade in terms of the various um, shipping lines, the airlines, and all those things. Is there any progress report so far to that effect? Thank you. OK, thank you. I think they were clear, so unless uh, Yes, please. Yes, we have um, a monitoring mechanism to track the successes, you know, of the previous trade fair. This is actually Ivory Coast or Cote d'Ivoire will be the third edition of the trade fair. From, you know, and in IATF 2021 last year, we tried to showcase the progress and the achievements and the pro and the pro and monitor the um, the successes of IATF 2018 in Egypt. For instance, in 2018 in Cairo, we closed deals of about 32 billion dollars. Of that 32 billion dollars, we had 75 percent of those deals that were completely done and closed. They were actually executed, whether it was in um, contracts of buyers and sellers, investment deals, and what have you, or even financing, they were 75% were closed. About 
7% of those, of another 7% rather, were still in, still in progress before the um, 2021 trade fair. So that's you know, easily about another 82% of the deals. There were those that fell through, and they fell through for a number of reasons. Um, some of them were COVID-19 issues, um, supply chain disruptions, because if you, you know, and, um, and, and just also um, transactions that probably didn't pass compliance and KYC um, 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 due diligence, you know, within the various financial institutions, you know, for the financing deals. So that's being tracked. And, and um, some of those successes were, you know, advertised and uh, promoted as a build up to 2021, as well as uh, during the trade fair. That will continue. So this $42.1 billion of trade that we've announced, we're not just announcing them, we're going to monitor the progress of their execution and conclusion, and indeed track how they're um, impacting on the growth of intra-African trade. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Your Excellency. Thank you, and thank you for the, for the question. Um, the innovation by um, Afri Champions which was introduced last year in part to ease the burden of, of uh, traveling in the midst of a pandemic has, has made a lot of progress. Um, I believe the last country, uh, there's a country recently signed on uh, to the platform for digital verification of, um, of documents to enable travel now during this, uh, this pandemic. Uh, so it's a very important innovation that uh, the Afro Champions have developed and we fully support it. In fact, we, we as a secretariat uh, tabled it uh, to uh, the ministers of trade and we encouraged the ministers of trade, all of them, uh, to adopt and join uh, the platform so that we can have uh, ease of travel in the middle of a pandemic. I'm hoping that more and more countries uh, will adopt uh, that platform. It has also been endorsed uh, by the African uh, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, uh, and that's an important signal. It's an important signal because it means that um, uh, our uh, health experts in Africa under the African Union or in the context of the African Union, that they recognize um, the, the importance of this innovation. So we fully support it. Um, this time last year, I think we, there were four or five countries that were active on the platform, that were live on the platform. Now there are more. And now that they will, it appears there will be vaccine uh, requirements for travel, I know that Afro Champions are looking into that also, incorporating that functionality into the platform, and that's important uh, for verification of, um, of uh, uh, um, uh, whether it is COVID tests or, or uh, um, uh, the, the vaccines uh, certificates. What we have seen, what I would say is that the other reason why this has become important, and I'm sure a year ago we would not have known, but what we are seeing is um, various countries around the world undermining um, PCR tests from African countries and vaccine certificates from African countries. And so this digital platform, um, in my view, would assist us to respond to that particular challenge and that particular discrimination. Because if you have a common, if you have a portal uh, for verification of uh, either vaccine uh, certificates or PCR um, uh, uh, tests and outcomes, it, it, is, it becomes a, um, a, a, a response, a formidable response to this uh, challenge that we have now. But in summary, I would say we fully support Afro Champions in this initiative. We think it will contribute to the, um, uh, to the, the, the enabling travel and ease the burden of travel in the middle of a pandemic. And we would appeal and, and, and urge countries 
more countries uh, to, is, to switch on to the platform. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your uh, Excellency. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, part of my job is also to keep an eye on time. I will invite two last questions, starting with yourself, sir. Thank you very much. Um, I, I thought we could have done three questions at a go. Not for me, but initially I would have saved some time. Um, anyway, my name is Echo Moses. I report for Bloomberg News. Um, in all this beautiful thing that we are doing, I feel that the media hasn't been carried along well. Now we have Afri AfriExim Bank, AFDB. They have a lot of packages for SMEs and Waterview. But I think that there's a knowledge gap between what you do on that table and where we sit here as journalists. Is there scope to create a media core, a press core, or have periodic and regular training and capacity sections for journalists? So we are up to speed, where we could take some of the nuances of some of what you do and then play it out there. When there's a good article, even BBC, C and the rest will pick it up. And to also end, I would say that is there scope to have a spectrum where you can have a digital TV platform what could be, could be titled AFC at TV, where anybody around the world can almost in real time see what is happening on TV or where we could do proper content production about what is happening on that continent to, to let the world know that, hey, the, the biggest trade area is really serious about it. I think you can carry us along better than we have done. I admit it's in the early days yet though, but I think there's so much we can do if you really decide to come along with us and not just meet us at press conferences, but train us along the line, periodic trainings would help. So that is my plea, not necessarily a question. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, last question while, and then uh, I will. Um... You will answer that. Or should we answer it? And the... I said you should answer the first question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, the president, I president will answer on my behalf. I think you should. I think you should. Uh, uh, you should because you know that uh, the project is uh, yes. still doing as we speak. So, um, what? What the question tells me is that uh, we should consult you as, uh -oh. as he does it. <laughs> yeah. Thank yeah, you. We should consult you as he does it because since your thinking is close to our thinking, uh, then it's better to hear more from you and validate our thoughts amongst the, 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 the media. We, are, we, we know that reporting trade in traffic and trade and what the FCFTA is doing. It's not it's complex. In fact, the agreement is a highly technical thing. So we, part of what in the plan this year, the budget, and the discussion we'll be, uh, we're having with the FCFT Secretary is how do we train journalists to report uh, accurately, properly, also passionately? If, if, uh, I know you don't want to report passionately, but this one you should uh, report passionately about it. Uh, and of course, the idea of um, uh, a digital channel uh, is also uh, something, um, for the bank's perspective, uh, we, we also think is very important, uh, but Given the, the fact that you are you're also thinking the same way, I, think, I, I would really encourage that you have that conversation. They're actually supposed to bring some journalists to Cairo. Yes, yes, yeah. that's true. Yes, thank you, President. Yeah, thank you. So we, yes, yes, sir, yes, sir. If I may just compliment what, what uh, Prof said. I, I, I really want to appreciate the, that intervention because it suggests to me that um, there is an acceptance that implementation of this agreement is not just this table, that it is all Africans, uh, whether you are a trade lawyer, or, um, but all of us have to uh, do our part to implement this agreement based on where we are 
uh, in our respective uh, mandates. And so I, I really appreciate that observation. We have had a number of um, uh, uh, information sessions here at the Secretariat. Uh, nowhere near enough, of course, because of time constraints. Uh, we try to do it uh, once every two months. Uh, so that's, that's the first point. I think that engagement is important and it will be ongoing. Second is, um, um, and, and this is what uh, Prof was saying, uh, uh, helping journalists to understand and helping Africans to understand um, how do you access this agreement, some of the things that we talked about uh, before, and also at the trade fair, how do you access financing um, to trade? Uh, now we are discussing a transit guarantee scheme that will be uh, rolled out throughout the African continent. How do we make sure that there is general knowledge and understanding um, about this, uh, uh, this initiative? So I, uh, we, we will do more. Uh, you are absolutely correct. We can do more and we will do more uh, to make sure that we have an outreach, advocacy, um, a platform, whether it is digital or, um, or, or in person or hybrid, I think we certainly can do more. Uh, the, uh, this agreement is very complicated, uh, very, very technical. Um, it, is, it is something that uh, was, was drafted by trade lawyers. And so obviously it is out of reach from, from ordinary people. And so we have, to, um, we have to make sure that it is easily understandable and that it is easily accessible. And the best way to do that is uh, uh, through uh, you uh, in the media to help us to convey uh, the benefits, the risks uh, of the agreement to small medium enterprises, to our business sector. Um, uh, uh, so I think it is a challenge that we will, that you, you have put on there. Um, that we will confront. My colleague also, who is um, uh, Tito's counterpart, uh, Mrs. Grace Koza, is there. She can raise her hand so that you can see her. Um, uh, so I think the two of them can, can work with you to develop a joint program for engaging with the media and engaging with journalists and making sure that um, that uh, all the good things that we are doing on behalf of our continent, that they are known. That's the only way we can be held accountable, is, pe is if people know what we're doing, and if, if they know um, the implications of what we're doing uh, for them. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, compliment uh, what Prof said and to thank the, um, the colleague for, for that intervention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. So uh, just to wrap that one up, as uh, you've had, I've received guidance and my instructions from the President, as my counterpart has also received the same. The only thing I want to say is we agree Africa deserves a mouthpiece to express its aspirations. I think that is, that, that's been clear for a long time. The second thing I'd say is it's a huge task and it requires collaborative effort. We all need to, to chip in. Uh, we are already uh, in communications with, uh, with my sister Grace, with my counterpart at AFC, with uh, ADB, because it will take a joined up approach. And I will be reaching out to uh, all of you uh, who support us on the media side and the, um, and the communication side to participate, to give us ideas, and to collaborate with us so that we tell a compelling story that actually drives the motivation and the work ethic of people. Because about belief and um, transmitting ideas is really through yourselves. So thank you very much for that. One last question, please, and then uh, uh, we will move on to a vote of thanks and wrap up. Please, sir, you Hello, everyone. My name is Chrissy Hayford and I'm um, the president of eSports Association Ghana. I speak on behalf of the youth and the new emerging space of electronic sports. Um, when we talk about electronic sports, many people think that it's just competitive play of video games. 
but it has a lot of opportunities. I'm very happy to have seen that um, your last conference had a youth engagement, but possibly it did not have an East Force engagement. Now, and also very happy that the Ivorian ambassador is here. I, from where I sit, have communications with other East Force activities in other countries. And I know very well that Ivory Coast is very powerful in driving esports agenda in Africa. So going forward in your next engagement, I believe that looking into activating youth development and youth drive, even pivoting on uh, media and communication, esports is the only umbrella that has thrived without traditional media, and anybody can testify to that, that with the youth going forward, we need a drive that is sense of ownership and a lot of um, alternative youth employment opportunities, whereby it is not those that are taught in the classrooms, but people discovering technologies that are available to them. So in a nutshell, I want to say that if inter Intra-African Trade Fair 2020-23 will look to eSports for opportunities to drive the youth agenda in Africa. It would be a worthwhile. If we look at some companies like Facebook, Apple, Microsoft, Google, um, Amazon, Tencent, all these, con all these companies are not wrong in choosing eSports as an economic drive. And when we look at South Korea, Japan, and some Japan and Singapore, they all have an East Force agenda for their nation. So I believe that Africa can do with an East Force agenda. Thank you. Thank you very much. So thank you. Um, Merci beaucoup, cher ami. Je voudrais rebondir sur la question de la jeunesse et dire que, pour ce qui concerne la Côte d'Ivoire en tout cas, vous savez, le gouvernement ivoirien travaille d'arrache-pied depuis un certain nombre d'années à faire de la jeunesse sa priorité. Parce que les statistiques révèlent aujourd'hui en Côte d'Ivoire que 70% de la population est jeune. Le gouvernement ivoirien a un ministère typiquement dédié à la jeunesse, piloté par un jeune ministre d'ailleurs pour dire que l'État ivoirien très tôt a compris la nécessité de faire de la jeunesse son levier et de pouvoir espérer les faire grandir dans de meilleures conditions possibles. Donc, le gouvernement a investi énormément d'argent, je n'ai pas les chiffres exacts sous les yeux, mais énormément d'argent pour permettre au secteur des jeunes d'avancer dans la direction de ce qu'ils veulent. Donc, pour dire que les jeunes ne sont pas laissés... Euh, sur la, au bord de la route, bien au contraire, c'est cette graine-là qui doit permettre demain de faire grandir la Côte d'Ivoire. Et 70%, vous voyez un peu ce que ça représente comme, comme représentativité au niveau de la population ivoirienne aujourd'hui. Donc il y a tout un... On développe toute une politique pour les jeunes aujourd'hui. Et, et je pense que dans les années à venir, ça, 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 ça va porter et ça va nous permettre d'aller un peu plus loin. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. So um, uh, thank you very much for attending and for participating fully. I also in particular want to thank our eminent guests who have answered. I don't think we've uh, ducked even one question today or answered it halfway. They've answered very fulsomely and provided a lot of information. It must be uh, a testament to the quality of the information transmitted earlier but it's also uh, the um, constructive nature of the question. So I thank you very much. I will ask our uh, eminent guests to take their seats again as we uh, then invite a vote of thanks and wrap up the session, please. The vote of thanks. Oh, well, well. 
So, um, I would um, like to invite Mr. Silva Ojakong, Chief of Staff, the CFTA Secretariat, to come and offer a vote of thanks, please. Thank you very much, uh, Tito. Uh, Excellency uh, Professor Orama, President of the uh, Afri Exim Bank, Excellency Mam Kelemeni, Secretary General, uh, AFCFTA, uh, Excellencies, the Ambassadors and the High Commissioners, uh, uh, MD Kanayo Awani, and the team from the AFRI Exim Bank, uh, colleagues from the FCFT Secretariat and from the AFRI Exim Bank. My role is very simple. It, this is the most simple part of the, of the event, is to move a vote of thanks um, to all of you that have been able to come uh, to on, that have honored our invitation and have spared your time to come and be with us here to share with us what we had for you uh, for the IATF 2021, but also the plan for IATF uh, 2023. There are many people that usually do a lot of work before an event of this nature. Uh, takes place, and it's very difficult to, uh, you know, name everybody that had done some work uh, to make such an event uh, successful. But I want to uh, first of all thank uh, His Excellency Olusegun Obasanjo uh, for sparing the time to come here and for guiding the, the process of the Inter-Africa Trade Fair. You have all heard that is the chairperson of the, um, uh, the council that uh, leads the preparations for, for the Inter-Africa Trade Fair. He's been there uh, for the preparations for 2021. He has kick-started the preparations for 2023. And we really would like to register our appreciation to him uh, for the drive, for the energy, for the inspiration that he gives uh, all of us, and for his knowledge and the wisdom that he imparts to us uh, as we prepare, as we um, prepare for the next IATF. Um, to His Excellency Professor Orama, uh, Managing Director Kanayo Awani, and indeed the team from the APRI Exim Bank, for a partnership that we are building together to rewrite uh, the story of Africa's economic integration and economic development. This is very important. Many people will not know uh, what that means, because we start talking about economic integration uh, from a long time ago. Professor uh, and the team from the APRI Exim Bank, thank you for partnering with uh, the FCFT Secretariat for seeing that there must be a synergy between the two institutions uh, to enable us to turn around the fortunes of uh, this continent that for a long time is called the bottom billion, but now we want to make it the top billion. Uh, and it, can, it is doable in 10. Uh, thank you very much. To His Excellency Wang Kele Mene for a continued focus leadership uh, for the AFCFTA team to see that this is where we are going this is where we need, this is what we need, and this is how we will do it. Thank you very much, Excellent Wam Kelly, many. 
to the excellencies, the high commissioners and the ambassadors that are here in Accra, but also the ambassadors that are in Addis Ababa. Um, particularly the ambassadors in Accra, they have given us very strong support, very, they are very supportive and very responsive. Uh, every time that we request the ambassadors and the high commissioners to come for an event uh, that we are holding at the AFCFT Secretariat, they have responded with enthusiasm. Your Excellencies, thank you very much. Our prayer now is that 2023 IATF, we are focusing. We know that you are going to relay the information uh, to the capital. Thank you, uh, Excellencies, High Commissioners and Ambassadors for coming. Um, members of the, the media uh, fraternity for keeping us visible keeping the, AAT, um, the AFCFTA Secretariat visible, uh, our partnership with Afri-Exim Bank visible, and indeed putting the uh, issues of Africa's development at the center. We know that you write a lot about politics, but I think it is time that you should begin to write a lot about what we are doing in terms of turning the economy of the continent around. So thank you, uh, members of the uh, media uh, fraternity. To the colleagues at the AFCFTA Secretariat, we know that you burn the midnight candle. I know it for sure, because I see that sometimes you are sending emails to me at 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. Sometimes I ask myself, when do they sleep? Uh, you burn the midnight candle. Thank you very much for burning the midnight candle because if you don't do that, then we will not be able to do what we are doing. Um, so it is now um, my honor and pleasure, again, on behalf of the Secretariat of the African Continental Free Trade Area, to say to all of you, thank you for coming. Thank you for honoring our, our invitations. We will keep coming back to you, calling you for more and more engagements as we prepare for IATF 2023. But in addition to that, all other events that are leading towards the development of our continent. Thank you very much. Have a good day. So thank you very much. My two items of, um, of housekeeping. We are going to have a, pre a press photography session with our principals and members of the diplomatic corps at the press wall out there. Lunch is served for all uh, our invited uh, guests, journalists, right out here in the foyer, and AFCFTA and Afraxim Bank colleagues on the sixth floor. Thank you very much, and thank you, the audience online as well. Thank you. So come on, and come on, we call on all Africa, come let us build our dream for all. Together we grow stronger and united, paint out the sky with the proud colors on your flags, and say goodbye to the dark. Chase me the lines that say